Hello, in this much awaited second video on Jet of Terra, we're going to bring for you not only the progress by Jet of Terra in their march towards VTOL and Astro aircraft, but also take a deep dive in the evolution of advanced propulsion technology that has led to Jet of Terra's design. Their propulsion system is undoubtedly one of the most efficient in the emerging VTOL aircraft and drone sector that has been pulled out of some forgotten chapters of aviation history. Furthermore, if you're looking to invest in the personal aerial vehicle and drone market that is estimated to grow to 1.5 trillion US dollars by 2050, then we will present to you an opportunity that will allow you a foothold in the market, even with a small sum of money. Now, we've already covered the basics of technology on Jet of Terra in an earlier video. You can check out the video through this link. Let's now dive in to learn what makes an aircraft propulsion the most efficient, which will lead us to Jet of Terra's design. The total efficiency of an aircraft propulsor depends upon two factors, the thermal efficiency and the propulsive efficiency. The latter is a measure of how efficiently the aircraft moves through the air. Propulsive efficiency is maximized when the difference between the velocity of the aircraft and their flux from the propulsor is minimized. Modern aircraft have largely focused on improving the thermal efficiency of the engines and in the process have come up with bigger and bigger engines. This unfortunately is averse to the principle of increasing propulsive efficiency which we will soon discover. The first thing that has to be understood is that in order to maximize aircraft propulsion efficiency, there should be synergy between the aircraft and the propulsors. More specifically, a propeller and the wing, if not the whole airframe, should work in harmony. This however is not the case in most modern aircraft where factors other than aeropropulsive efficiency are sometimes given more preference. If we look at the coefficient of lift of most aerofoils, we will see that they reach a peak value of 1.7. Whereas if we were to create synergy between the propulsion system and the wing, then values of over 8 have been achieved in wind tunnel tests. This means that we can generate more than four times the lift force, which will result in much shorter takeoff distance and much superior takeoff performance. However, what we normally see in a modern passenger jet is the opposite. There is little to no synergy between its engine and its wing. In a jetliner, the thrust of the jet is not linked to the lift, well, at least not directly but only designed to overcome the drag of the aircraft. So if the aircraft is standing still with its brakes on, then even if the engines are blasting out exhaust at high speed, there will be no lift produced. Why? Because the lift is only created by the speed of air moving over the wing, which depends upon the forward speed of the aircraft. Similarly, when the modern jetliner is starting to take off, then even if the exhaust gases coming out of the engine are well over 300 miles per hour, but if the aircraft has only accelerated to a speed of 30 miles per hour, then the lift will be based on the aircraft speed of 30 miles per hour and not the 380 miles per hour jet exhaust speed. Modern jet engines do not synergistically work with the wings which is why we can even see them mounted sometimes behind the wings and on the empennage in some jet aircraft. But what happens if we did use the jet exhaust to generate some lift, even when the aircraft is static? Yes, this can be done and this is exactly how we can artificially increase the coefficient of lift to much higher values. This technique is called power lift or lift augmentation. We can trace back the efforts for higher power lift all the way back to the early days of flight. It reached its zenith in the 1970s when considerable research was dedicated in this area because there was interest in developing short takeoff and landing military transport aircraft. However, development activity in this area subsided. The reason was that some critical issues at the time could not be resolved with the available technology. But thanks to electric aviation, power lift technology is making a comeback. So what is power lift and how is it done? There are four main ways power lift has been achieved in the past. The first technique 
is placing the engine on top of the wings. This leads to a system called upper surface blown flap or USB for short. In this system, the high speed exhaust air is blown directly over the wing producing much higher lift due to the difference of pressure between the upper and lower wing surface. Also by using flaps, the exhaust can be deflected downwards utilizing the Kwanda effect to enhance lift further. The Boeing YC-14 was an example of this. The second technique is attaching the engine directly underneath the wing. This way, the extended flap can deflect the jet exhaust downwards when needed. This technology is called jet flap. Note that in almost all modern jetliners, the engines are attached to pods and therefore hang much lower below the bottom wing surface. And even extended flaps do not come in the way of the slipstream created by most passenger jet engines. The jet flap technology was used in the hunting H126 jet. The third method involves bleeding some of the compressed air out of the engine and releasing it along the length of the wing such that it energizes and accelerates the boundary layer and thus produces higher lift. This method is called blown flaps. The Boeing 3678 TBLC used this technique. The fourth method is known as externally blown flaps. This system uses double slotted flaps to direct part of the jet exhaust downwards while the rest of the exhaust passes through the flap and then follows the downward curve due to Coanda effect. The Boeing C-17 uses this and Lilium jet can also be said to be a variant of externally blown flaps. Even though these methods did yield coefficient of lift values of over 5, however more efficient technology is rarely the one that prevails. The costs, manufacturability, maintenance and safety are parameters that take priority over a purely efficiency driven system. In fact, once all these other parameters are settled, only then we look at efficiency improvements. Having looked at the lift augmentation methods, we can now begin to understand how Jet Optera incorporates them. One of the problems with the jet engine and even propeller is the circular shape of its slipstream which covers only a portion of the wing. There is unavoidable residual rotating flow from jets and propellers. It's much better if this propeller wash is spread across the wing, thus giving high powered lift coefficient uniformly along the whole area of the wing. This is where we can appreciate the benefit of distributed propulsion. With this information, the design of modern electric aircraft such as the NASA's Maxwell or Electra Aero would perhaps now make more sense to us. Although with smaller, more spread out propellers, we can get high speed airflow uniformly across the wing, but the slipstream still remains circular. Ideally, we should have an airflow that matches the profile of the wing. And this is where fluidics come in. The Jet Optera's fluidic propulsion system is not limited to any shape. The fluid microjets can be released along the length of the wing in small rectangles thus following the profile of the wing. Also note that fluidics isn't something that hasn't been tried and tested before. The BAE Systems Demon, a UAV, very successfully used it. Through fluidic jets, not only the thrust and lift were controlled, but also the need for control surfaces was entirely eliminated. The aircraft could be pitched and rolled using a controlled amount of blown air release. Jet Optera, through its carefully crafted propulsion system, has been analyzed to achieve coefficient of lift values of 6. Jet Optera's technology goes even further as its fluidic propulsion system not only enhances lift but also improves thrust. Its meticulously designed outlet ducts entrain flow and increase the thrust by 2 to 3 times. Note that thrust is a product of both mass flow rate and velocity. The greater the mass of air and the greater the speed at which it is pushed out, the higher the thrust. One has to remember that for propulsion of an aircraft, thrust requires a minimum velocity. In the Dyson bladeless fan, the objective was to have the highest mass flow rate blown by the fan 
rather than a smaller amount of high-speed air. Low airspeed doesn't give thrust. Jetoptera system, on the other hand, prioritizes the highest speed possible for optimal amount of entrained flow, and this is where higher thrust is obtained. Because of the combination of high entrainment and lower speeds of the emerging jets in Jetoptera's design, its efficiency is high, but it also has a very low noise signature. This is because the air compressor required for the fluidic jet can either be run by an electric motor or a gas turbine and in either case it will be housed inside the aircraft fuselage which will allow heavy shielding to lower the noise significantly. Jet Optera was recently awarded two small business technology transfer contracts from the US Air Force. This allowed Jet Optera to further characterize the noise of its patented fluidic propulsive system in an anechoic chamber wind tunnel and accurately compare it with legacy systems like propellers and ducted fans. Another contract also helped to prove that the fluidic propulsive system used with an upper surface blown wing configuration will produce specific lift force levels similar to those of a rotor wing aircraft but without moving parts. While the J2000 VTOL might be the most eye-catching aircraft from Jetoptera because of its flying car application, they also have other S-tall UAVs in their portfolio. These will also use fluidic jets to create an upper blown surface with entrainment of air to maximize the propulsive efficiency. The UAVs have several applications in the growing $80 billion commercial drone sector for surveying and logistics. Keep in mind that Jet Optera's propulsor is dependent upon compressed air which is energy agnostic, meaning that a full electric system will be available when the appropriate battery is ready to power their propulsion system. Jet Optera states that the battery should have an energy level of about four times the current levels, that is 1000 watt hours per kilogram. Until then, they plan to use sustainable aviation fuels for powering their turbo compressors. So this concludes the technical part of the video. Now, as I mentioned earlier about sharing an opportunity to become part of the very vibrant EVTOL STOL sector, Jetoptera has opened up for investments from general public. This is an exciting opportunity for those who are looking to invest in this market. Jetoptera's technological foundation rests on solid grounds and so far have successfully demonstrated the subscale models. They have 48 awarded patents and 158 pending. For further details on investment, please visit the link in the description. A disclaimer here. This video is not sponsored by Jetoptera, but we are thankful to them for providing us technical details and scientific papers of their technology and products to help us investigate and research. And with this, the video is concluded. If you learned something from it, please do give it a thumbs up. Thank you for your attention.